Hello. This chill computer guy. We're here in Bitwig Studio. Uh, this is update 1.3.1. 1. Uh, this update is uh, just a few little bug fixes. Uh, 1.2 had uh, the addition of a, a different type of a browser. Now, when I uh, first uh, used it, it threw me off a little bit. I found myself a little lost. So what I'm going to do with this tutorial is explain the difference between the two browsers. You'll know that there's a browser here, which I tend to keep closed most of the time, and then there's another browser that pops up whenever you hit a plus sign. I hit the plus side, sign and it pops up. Now, here's what's going on with this browser. Now if I go to the device, let's say I want to put a synth in here, put the polysynth in, there it goes. Now, You'll notice that there's a blue border around the browser, and there's a blue border around the polysynth, and there's a blue line connecting them. This is very good because this messed me up because I'd be like, okay, there's my polysynth. I'm going to throw some reverb on there. Whoa, what the heck? Where'd my polysynth go? And it would be replaced as opposed to an addition. What you have to do is you have to go to synth, there's your synth again, like that's where we were, but until you hit the actual plus symbol, the browser stays open, but you'll notice the blue line is now to the right of the device. At that point is when you put your next device in. And then if you want to add there, you hit the plus, you got to put in a, a little bit of dynamics there, there you are. And so that's how that browser works and again there's that blue line you see it kind of follows there so it'll follow clear over here there it's diagonal that's pretty pretty neat but at first I didn't notice any blue lines I didn't notice anything I didn't know if the browser was active I was completely confused um, something however about this browser and when you're done when you have all your devices just hit OK and then it will close and then there you are you're good to go that's beautiful now another thing about this particular browser is let's say if we go to, to samples and we click through here we are not going to get a uh, preview of our sample unless we have MIDI notes going through that particular device let me show you real quick if we go ahead and uh, throw some quick MIDI notes in here There's some uh, some MIDI notes right there, and then we hit play. Now we get a preview based on those MIDI notes, and you can do that with any instrument, any device, any plugin, and you can really get in a, a really strong sense if that particular sound is going to work with your with your MIDI material. Now. Again, with this browser, it's more of an auditioning tool than a browser. Although, if I were to turn this off, again, you can't audition these unless you have MIDI notes that are being run through. Unless it's this browser makes no sound unless MIDI is running through it. Let's go back to the other browser, and I will show you really quick with this particular browser. If you want to sample, if you want previews of your samples, you go down here, click on that, it'll turn yellow. After that, now you can actually get a preview. I'm just hitting the down arrow and I'm getting a, a live preview of each individual sample. So now as far as previewing samples for a drag and drop type of a, a situation, this might be a better option for you. But and again, you can, you know, you can load up your devices through here as well. You know, you can, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do. If you want to put your, uh, your e-snare in there, you can click on it and there's your e-snare. But with this, it, it drops it. You know, if I were to put a, a dynamic on there, it's going to just add it. So it's going to always add. So as you click through here, it will always add. It will always add a new device, unless it's a, an instrument, and it will be replaced. Effects will be in addition to. 
So I just wanted to explain the difference between the two browsers. I know when I first uh, was introduced to the new browser, and I believe it was 1.2, I was a little confused, and to be honest, I missed the old browser a lot. But now, once that I've gotten used to the new browser and actually auditioning live MIDI through the new browser, it shouldn't even be called a browser. It should be called more of an auditioning. It's an auditioning tool. But now that I've, I've gotten used to it and I've learned it, um, I really, really like it. A few little things I'd like to see in updates is uh, for a way you could adjust these columns, maybe have some columns prioritized, close some columns down. Um, go in here, you can create you know a new collection you know and type it up in there and there you go and now when you click that collection it will be nothing but what's in your collection so that's an option you have if you just want to drag all your your favorite samples and patches into the that folder that's an option you have but I just wish that that there was a way to organize this better as far as uh, you know some of these columns I do need some of them I don't and personally I would I would look for certain devices in a in certain order okay another thing is these these folders are always I, I prefer them just collapsed but they are they're actually uh, they're actually fully uh, opened every time you open this browser see if I hit OK then I open that browser again and I go to presets they're all unfolded again so that's kind of annoying that just annoys me I don't know why that annoys me I'm neurotic I just I'm a creature of organization especially when it comes to finding the sound quick and so basically my option is to, I wish I could also default to this folder. I would like to open my browser and just see my, my, my personal folder with all my personal patches and, uh, and samples in there, as opposed to, you know, being greeted with that. That's a little overwhelming, although it is, you can see a lot at once. So I guess, you know, good, bad, I'm sure it's, it's the first swing at this one. I'm sure it'll be improved on. Another thing I would like to see, just real quick, one more little thing, is uh, let's say I, I throw a, uh, you know, let's say let's throw a synth in here. There you go. And then I open up my macros, and then here I click here, and it takes me to, uh, whoops, let me hit OK. Now, once that's closed down, if I click here, anywhere in this square area, it's going to open the browser in the presets tab which is which is great because honestly if I'm clicking here I'm looking for presets but I saw these icons and it kind of got me excited I figured if I clicked here it would maybe go right to the folder that that pre that that particular preset was in or maybe if I clicked here it would go to other poly synths or here it would go to other you know in other words make make it with this with this large area here you might as well put a couple of options in there so when you click it will maybe take you to a specific spot in the browser you know again I mean if I'm gonna click here I'm more than likely looking for presets but it would be nice to maybe have a short couple of shortcuts here to very specific things with this large space being here I imagine it's kinda like probably gonna be an add-on in a future update but just a little thing that I saw uh, the two browsers, the difference between them. I know for me there was quite a bit of confusion when I was first introduced to the new browser, but now that I've kind of got the hang of it and I understand, uh, you know, what, what they're getting at, I, I actually really, really like the new browser. I wish I could organize it a little bit better, but maybe in a future update they'll allow you to drag those tabs around, maybe delete some, maybe add some, maybe, you know, organize that, that, uh, that preview browser just the way you want it. This is Chill Computer Guy. Join us next week. Uh, I'm going to try to have some more on Bitwig. We're actually, there's all kinds of Bitwig tutorials coming up. I just need to get them up. I need to get them edited. I need to get them thrown up on YouTube. Subscribe. I also have Photoshop tutorials down here. And I have uh, some Premiere Pro uh, tutorials coming up. As well as some Reason Sound Design tutorials. Um, and I think there's a couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe After Effects tutorials coming up. I don't know, I'll have to look. I'll have to look. And then there's some random, there's a, a Windows 10 tutorial that I did that it's been up there for, you know, half a year and it's got like 10 views or something. So be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, be sure to click on other videos, check them all out. There's a few swear words in there once in a while, but like I say, you know, I could spend all day editing or I just throw it up, you know, so and that's what I do. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week.